good evening, everyone, and welcome to our regular board meeting of tonight, Tuesday, September the 4th. I would like to ask uh, our student trustee, Will, to uh, lead us in prayer. Let us praise as we begin this new school year to give it to you, Jesus. Before we enter into the business at hand, let us entrust all trustees, staff, and students of the Halton Catholic District School Board into your loving care. May we work to build a strong and loving community, a community of compassion and welcome, an enthusiasm for learning new things, and a desire to be Christ for one another. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Colossians. As God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Bear with one another, and if anyone has a complaint against another, forgive each other, just as the Lord has forgiven you, so you must also forgive. Above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. The word of the Lord. Jesus, may you support us all the day long. Help us to take advantage of the times when the busy world is hushed and the fever of life eases a bit and our work lessons. May we eat healthy, sleep enough, play often, and surrender all our burdens in life to you, Jesus, teacher of all. Amen. Thank you very much, Will. Appreciate that. I would uh, now like to ask the Vice Chair to uh, inform us of uh, motions adopted in camera. Okay. Um, motions adopted in camera at the June 28, 2018 special in-camera board meeting. The board approved the appointment of Patrick Daly as Director of Education and Secretary of the Board. At the August 2, 2018 special in-camera board meeting, a motion regarding property was adopted. There were no motions adopted in camera this evening. Uh, information received in camera. The following information was received at the August 2nd, 2018 special in-camera board meeting. 
uh, Angelina Angie Barden appointed as elementary principal effective September 1st, 2018. Jason Shannon appointed as elementary vice principal effective September 1st, 2018. Martin McNally appointed as acting secondary vice principal effective September 1st, 2018 with an end date to be determined. The following information was received at the August 21st, 2018 special in camera board meeting. The resignation of Dr. Brendan Brown, superintendent of education, special education services. Uh, and the following information was received at tonight's in camera uh, meeting. Uh, retirements, Corinne Bracco, Patricia Clifford, Dominico Grande, Michael Harris, Vince Murray, uh, Suzanne O'Callaghan, uh, Bernice O'Hara, and Linda Rivard, uh, retired effective June 30th, 2018. Uh, Christoph uh, Pluchowski resigned effective August 31st, 2018. Uh, and uh, in regards to department head and acting department heads, Lisa Raposo and Melissa Pope appointed as department heads effective September 1st, 2018, for a period of up to four years. Olivia Lehman, Ryan Latimer, and Lori uh, Pelucci-Nier appointed as acting department heads effective September 1st, 2018, for a period of up to one year. And uh, in regards to hiring, uh, the list of um, 129 probationary teachers effective September 1st, 2018 will be listed in the minutes for this evening. Thank you for not having me <laughs> read them out. <laughs> Thank you very much, Vice Chairman Ryan. Number two, uh, the approval of the agenda. Are there any additions to the agenda? No? Okay, thank you. Uh, can I have a mover, please? Trust, Trustee Trite, seconded by Trustee Carabella. All in favor? Thank you. Uh, declarations of conflict of interest, anyone? No, okay, thank you. No presentations, no delegations. We're on number six, approval of the minutes. Uh, 6.1 minutes of the June 19th, 2018 regular board meeting. Can I have a mover, please? Trustee Intermassey, seconded by Trustee Quinn. Any comments to those minutes? None. All in favor? Thank you. At 6.2 minutes of the June 28th, 2018 special board meeting, can I have a mover, please? Trustee Rose, seconded by Trustee Quinn. Uh, any comments to those? None. All in favor? Thank you. Uh, 6.3 minutes of the August 21st, 2018 special board meeting, can I have a mover, please? Vice Chair Murray, seconded by Trustee Carabella. Any comments to those? No. All in favor? Or abstain? Thank you. All right, what's that done? Uh, seven, business arising from previous minutes. Uh, 7.1, the summary of outstanding items from the previous minutes, and I think they're pretty straightforward on page 18. Any questions to those? None? Good. Action items 8.1, the borrowing bylaw. Superintendent Nagoy, you're on. Thank you, Madam Chair. At the March uh, 18, 2014 regular meeting of the board, trustees approved bylaw 2014 FO5 authorizing borrowing of up to 100 million in a fiscal period. Since 2014, the board has continued to grow and has been since required to purchase various sites that have been funded over a period of 15 years um, and has resulted in a significant cash flow shortage. In addition to rapid growth in Milton, North Oakville, and uh, Halton Hills, there is additional sites required to uh, accommodate growth, which will exceed the current by bylaw borrowing limit. From an operating standpoint, the board uh, is, um, keeps available an operating credit facility of approximately 10% of our provincial allocation or operating budget. So approximately 35 to 37 million uh, of available credit to address the uh, fluctuations between the revenue being received and the cash outflows so the expenses that are actually being incurred. To address these pressures as well as the new ministry uh, cash management strategy that I will be discussing in more detail in uh, information items uh, which will result in deferred um, funding to the board, staff recommends that the board um, approve an amendment to the bylaw to increase it to $150 million. And I'd be happy to take any questions trustees may have. Thank you. Any questions? Trustee Quinn. Uh, perhaps this will be answered later on in the afternoon. 
but what is the expected cost to us in interest charges from the new deferred payment plan coming from the ministry? That's an excellent question. The details haven't all been uh, provided, so we don't know if all the eligible uh, proceeds of disposition are going to be included in determining that amount or whether uh, some of the committed amounts uh, will be excluded. Um, being diligent in how we um, uh, maximize our funds, we have entered into term deposits for the proceeds of disposition that were not to be spent within the next year or two, uh, which are perfectly safe, but they are locked in for a period of time. So that will put a pressure on us from a cash flow perspective if the ministry determines that those committed funds uh, will be part of this calculation. Um, the memo does mention briefly that there will be some eligibility criteria for, not, for funds that are not committed. We just don't know what that means. So I can't answer right now. When that information becomes available, we'll provide a further uh, update to the board. Thank you. Any other questions, comments? None? All right. Um, I'll read the uh, motion. That is the motion. Yes. Uh, resolved that the Halton Catholic District School Board rescind resolution number 5714 that states the Halton Catholic District School Board approved by lot number 2014F05 <coughs> excuse me, to authorize borrowing during any fiscal year up to $100 million until provincial grants, municipal taxes and other revenues are received as contained in Appendix A to this report. Resolved that the Halton Catholic District School Board approve bylaw number 2018-F06 to authorize borrowing during any fiscal year up to $150 million until provincial grants, municipal taxes, and other revenues are received as contained in Appendix A to this report. Can I have a mover, please? Trustee Michael, seconded by Trustee Rowe. Any questions or comments to this, Trustee Quinn? Through you, Madam Chair, just in the language of any fiscal year, I'm, I'm wondering if we as trustees should put a little, little limit on the time frame that we're giving this uh, bylaw to be in place and perhaps have the uh, staff come back to us maybe in a couple of years to let us know what the situa situation is with the new government and uh, revisit it in a couple of years. Superintendent Nagoy. Thank you, Madam Chair. The, the language is a banking terminology. It, it says that within a year, a fiscal year being September 1st to August 31st, our borrowing limit is that. It does not mean we will be um, borrowing that amount at all times or at any particular time. It means it's available to us as a board if we need to draw upon um, money in order to address our cash flow needs, whether they're operating capital or site related. Um, as We've, we currently have 100 million uh, since 2014, and we have, uh, at that point in time, 100 million meant uh, approximately a third of our operating budget. 150 million currently is the same ratio. So we're, we're maintaining that ratio as we grow. Uh, the, the site appreciation values are quite uh, significant in terms of um, how much they've appraised over that time frame. Uh, and this amount is appropriate to allow us to grow over the next couple of years. Um, as the needs change, uh, we do come back to the board, um, and the borrowing is also, uh, bylaws are also reviewed uh, as part of uh, a new trustee term, so we do go through the various um, requirements and policies and procedures. Um, it is, however, at this point in time, a requirement uh, for the board to, to address the limit that we have in place. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Are you ready for the vote? All right. Trustee Caraballa? In favor. Thank you. Trustee Stephanie? In favor. Trustee Ian Tomasi? In favor. Trustee Michael? In favor. Trustee Trites? In favor. Vice Chair Murray? In favor. Trustee Danko? In favor. Trustee William? No, I'm sorry, Trustee Denzel, sorry. That's all right, uh, in favor. Uh, Trustee Rowe. In favor. Trustee William. In favor. Trustee Quinn. In favor. Thank you very much. So that is done. We have no staff reports. 10.1, uh, student trustee update, and that is Trustee William. Uh, so uh, we haven't done a lot in the year so far. We were <laughs> on. <laughs> oh, 
on summer break, uh, though last year, uh, Mr. Perusen, the uh, vice principal uh, in charge of the International Student Program, asked for some help uh, from the student trustees and student senate, so we went out and uh, helped at uh, St. Thomas Aquinas in Oakville, uh, just welcoming the, the new international students we have, uh, as well as after that, the student senators for the different schools uh, brought their students around the schools, introducing them to some of the staff members and giving them a sense of what that's like. So that's, our, that's the only thing we've done so far. Uh, we will be meeting with the student senators next Tuesday to discuss what's coming in the year. Uh, we're looking at pursuing currently a, uh, a bullying initiative, as I believe it was pursued in the last few years as well. Other than that, we are to be determined. School educational field trips. Superintendent Cipriano. Thank you, Madam Chair. Before you, uh, you have the four approved school field trips that are upcoming in the fall. Three of them are in elementary schools. One is, a, is a, one of our secondary schools. I'd be happy to answer any questions that you or any of the trustees may have. Thank you. Any questions for Superintendent Cipriano? No, everyone's happy. All right, thank you. 10.3 Summer 2018 School Facilities Update, Superintendent Merrick. Thank you, Madam Chair, uh, and through you. Uh, this is to present our annual report on our uh, uh, summer facilities projects. Uh, on the operation side, we had the cleaning of 56 uh, of the board schools over the summer um, and uh, relocation of a lot of portable classrooms. So this is a banner year for us in portable classrooms. So we had 28 new portables installed and 16 relocations. So a lot of work uh, going in there to get those up and running for today. On the capital side, uh, St. Scholastica opened up today. Uh, very excited about that. Uh, a 10 month build, so it's still a very quick build uh, for us. Uh, and all, the team put a lot of work into, uh, over the last uh, week and a half or so to get it up and, and clean and ready to go for, uh, for students today. So uh, we still have a lot of work to do there as well, um, but we'll get it completed in the coming weeks. Uh, moving on to, to St. Nicholas. Uh, so the former uh, St. Joseph's building uh, was demolished uh, over the summer and we're ready to start the new build of uh, St. Nicholas on that site. Uh, and the students uh, from, the, uh, from St. Joseph's were all moved over to St. James, uh, which is of course now renamed uh, St. Nicholas. Uh, moving on to St. Mark's, uh, so we have the, uh, the building addition uh, there for the, uh, the five classroom plus a spec ed suite addition, uh, plus a three room childcare, plus a early on center, so it's a two story addition going there. Um, work is well underway to start the addition there uh, and we're hoping to open for January of 2019. And we also did a major renovation there over the summer as well, so a lot of work went into that facility. Um, we also relocated the Burlington Thomas Merton Center to 460 Brant Street, so they have a new home uh, in the Upper Canada Place on, uh, on Brant Street. Uh, major renewal projects were completed at various sites, uh, Assumption, Bishop Reading, Canadian Martyrs, Notre Dame, St. Mark's and St. Michael's. Uh, so again, uh, large projects uh, underway at those schools and wrapped up uh, last week. Asphalt repairs are at 14 schools, uh, kindergarten playgrounds, uh, the natural playgrounds were installed at 11 schools, uh, and we'll have future reports coming out on the financials for all those projects, uh, as well as reports on the approvals as we get into next summer's projects and start planning for, for those uh, well in advance of next summer, but I'd be happy to take any questions that trustees may have. Thank you. Uh, any questions for Superintendent Merrick? None. Trustee Caravella? Thank you, Sri, Madam Chair. I wanted to, to ask you about the portables at Bishop Reading. So w how many are there there? Sri, Madam Chair, there's 43 portables at Bishop Reading now. So, uh, and the addition hopefully started in October on the new addition, which will be adding 30 new classrooms there. So, so how soon are the students uh, going to be um, shifting from the portables into the building? We'll be working throughout the entire school year. We hope to open up the new addition, uh, at least the phase, so the, the classroom portion the uh, cafeteria and the, the new child care center for September of 2019. Mm -hmm. And that'll leave us with doing the, the gymnasium and, the, uh, uh, and new, uh, the new weight room, the exercise fitness center uh, in the following year to open up in September of 2020. Just to follow up, I'm just trying to visualize 43 um, you know, just taking over a lot of property and, and how is like safety issues like kids going to washrooms or, you know, the ma getting through the maze is, is all in place that it's safe? We're, we're very fortunate that we have a large uh, site at BR. Uh, it is a very big site. It's, one of, it's our biggest secondary school site. So 
Um, there's a lot of land there. Um, we did a lot of relocating those portables over the summer to be able to accommodate construction on site as well as 43 portables on site. So they're all on the east uh, side of the of the site now. Um, so yeah, they're they're all located there, but all new walkways uh, throughout them, um, and we do have sufficient washrooms in the building to accommodate that. It's uh, nice to have the asphalting too on that side. Be a lot easier in the winter. Uh, any other questions? No. Well, on behalf of the board, I'd like to thank you all, uh, your department and all other individuals and departments who worked so hard over the summer to get the schools up and running for September 4th. So please pass our appreciation on to them. Um, no one has any other questions. I was in St. Scholastica this afternoon. The school is beautiful. It is uh, a good few weeks away from completion, uh, but um, the classrooms uh, have children in them, and they're all working, and it's just a matter of uh, finishing off other areas of the property. And even with St. Scholastica opened, I then went on to uh, St. Benedict's, and they are still over 1,000 students on a site that is smaller than our average site. So that is still an issue at St. Benedict's. That site is probably about two-thirds the size of... Uh, one of our regular sites for elementary. So it's a very crowded site, and part of it's uphill. Yes. So how many do we have at St. Scholastica for the start of the school year? St. Scholastica, I believe, I spoke to the principal today, and I think she said it was 150 right now. But it is going to grow. 250, okay. Well, I'm not listening. <laughs> she doesn't know. Okay, so it's 250 this today. Okay. Any other questions? None? Okay, thank you very much. Um, let's just see now. We are moving on to Superintendent Merrick again. <coughs> right, yes, you. Uh, Ryan, school drinking water lead content test results. Thank you, Madam Chair, and through you, uh, we present our annual drinking water uh, test results uh, for 2018. Uh, we have Steve Allum here, our, uh, our manager of energy and environment, here to summarize the results, so I'll let him come up and walk through that. Um, Steve's been leading us through the ministry's new initiative to test all drinking water locations in schools across the province uh, and he's frankly been leading the way um, across the province as well so many boards are looking to us um, as to how we've managed uh, through this process and looking to Steve as to how he's done it so um, we're very happy to have Steve on our team and, and leading us through this program so I'll turn it over to him to present the results from, uh, from this past summer's testing. Okay thank you and good evening. Uh, I'm gonna, I just have a few slides here that will encapsulate the re information report you have in front of you. 10.4, 2018 school drinking water testing for lead. So I thought I would start with the changes uh, to the Ontario regulation that were uh, made last year. Uh, there were three pillars to those changes. Um, there was a uh, mandate of uh, the drinking fixtures be uh, assigned by the school boards in all schools. Uh, the quantity of lead testing was changed such that 33% uh, of all drinking fixtures each year needed to be completed testing at elementary schools and 20% each year at secondary schools. And they have uh, end dates there as January 1st, 2020 and 2022 respectively. And the data collection as far as the custodians logging when they flushed each fixture uh, was changed such that they need to record now the individual times that they flushed the fixtures. Purpose of Ontario Regulation 24307 is to provide protection against the effects of lead, particularly with children, of children underneath, under the age of 18. So uh, quickly, uh, here is uh, in front of you. You can see the uh, how the drinking fixtures themselves were identified. Uh, perhaps, obviously, all drinking fountains and bottle filling stations were considered drinking fixtures, and sinks in the special education and kindergarten rooms where no other fountain existed. Sinks used for preparation of food. Uh, sinks in the child cares, which uh, I communicated with the child care operators to, to um, identify those uh, fixtures and any sinks in health rooms. Non-drinking fixtures were sinks in classrooms, except as noted above. Sinks in wash fountains and bathrooms. And sinks used for cleaning or maintenance of the school, such as custodial sinks. As a key feature, uh, we felt that we, while it wasn't a, a, a mandatory part of the regulatory changes, uh, we felt it necessary to communicate to the schools which of the fixtures were not designated for drinking. Uh, these signs that you see here were posted at all, all of these fixtures, and uh, 
this information uh, that you see to the right, what the sign means and what, does, what it doesn't mean, was shared at administrators' meeting about this time last year. Uh, what it does mean, the fixture has been assigned for, uh, as a fixture not meant for drinking, and it will not be tested for lead during the prescribed testing period. But what it does not mean is that the fixture was tested in a higher than acceptable lead content and that it is unsafe. take you through the lead testing process briefly. Uh, drinking water testing uh, occurs between May 1st and October 31st each year. Two samples at every fixture are taken. Uh, a standing sample after the plumbing is left uh, standing for a period of six hours. The plumbing, or that fixture, pardon me, is then flushed and then a sample is taken, uh, a second sample is taken. And they are designated as the standing and the flush sample. All samples are analyzed by an accredited laboratory, Maxim Analytics in Mississauga. And if a sample exceeds the, lead, uh, the standard for lead, which is 10 micrograms per liter, school boards take direction uh, from the local health department for remedial action. On the right is the flow chart that we were given by the province uh, through the health departments uh, as to what happens in the remedial actions that are, are you know, can be prescribed basically when an exceedance occurs. So far, uh, th this is through 17 and 18 testing. Uh, the requ as required by the re regulation, 66% of all drinking water fixtures should be tested on elementary schools, 40% at secondary. Uh, we are now through 100% of the fixtures at elementary schools, and anywhere between 55 and 100% have been tested at secondary schools. The only caveat being is that in be uh, after c uh, completion of testing this year, some schools opted to install bottle filling stations at their schools. We went and did that, but that necessitates retesting at that point. Overall, 93% of all drinking water fixtures have been tested to date board-wide. This gives you a quick snapshot of the exceedances that were found this year. Uh, just as an example, we can look at, say, Lumen Christi. Uh, you can see how it's apportioned. Only one of 10 fixtures exceeded on the standing sample. Nine of 10 fixtures were in compliance, so it was only 10% of the fixtures tested. And in this case, uh, we went and talked to the teacher. She was not, had not used the fixture at all that year, so we just removed it entirely. There are other remedial actions. We increased the um, uh, flushing that's done at the school from weekly to daily, um, or we can post signage and reclassify the fixture if it's not being used for drinking. Uh, there were no other exceedances registered at the remainder of the board schools, and test results have all been posted on the board's public website. Remedial actions and conclusions. In 2018-19, the following schools will have their plumbing flushed daily as a result of an exceedance. Uh, only six schools out of uh, 50, 56 buildings. All other uh, board schools will be flushed on a weekly basis. No schools require alternate drinking water sources. And then finally, HS, HCDSB is in compliance with the remedial actions as prescribed by the Halton Region Health Department and in compliance with Regulation 247 of the Safe Drinking Water Act. Questions? Thank you. Uh, Trustee Trice. Thank you. Through you, Madam Chair. Steve, can you just remind us what flushing is? Sure. So uh, at minimum, uh, custodians are required every week to, to flush the plumbing of the schools. Um, so that is usually two separate things. It's a five minute flush, uh, as in turning on, as simple as turning on a fixture for five minutes at all end of branch points in the school to get the water moving through the school, and then 10 seconds at every drinking fixture in the school. Thank you, any other questions? Uh, Trustee Quinn. Thanks very much. You, Madam Chair, follow up to Trustee Trite's question. Who's responsible for the oversight of the custodian and ensuring that the paperwork filled out is actually being complied? Uh, good question. The facility managers and myself have, are right now kind of doing it as a, a cooperative. Uh, we receive uh, alerts on our e-based management software system if a custodian has not filled out a log. Uh, additionally, because of the um, added import of the daily flushing schools. I tend to go there myself and follow up with them and make sure that they're, not only are they filling in the log, but they're actually doing the testing and that they understand where to go, what the locations are, et cetera. Any other questions? None? 
Thank you very much, Steve. We appreciate all your work. Very important safety issue. Thank you. Uh, now, 10.5, 11th Annual Diocesan Celebration of Catholic Education, Superintendent Nahr. Thank you, Madam Chair, through you to trustees. Uh, in 2008, the first diocesan mass took place in celebration of Catholic education, and since then, all of the partners have taken turns in hosting uh, this annual mass and celebration across the diocese, and this is our 11th year, and we're up for hosting. Uh, the theme this year is The Gift That Is In You, taken from 1 Timothy. And the Mass will take place on September 20th at Holy Cross Church up in Georgetown. Uh, we're going to be reflecting on the history of Catholic education across our diocese this year. And so we'll have a theatrical presentation at the beginning performed by students from St. Ignatius of Loyola, sort of reenacting the history of, of Catholic education across the diocese. And this will be followed by a Mass uh, celebrated by Bishop Crosby at 4.30 and then a reception afterwards. Uh, in keeping with the theme of celebrating the history of Catholic education in our diocese, we've also extended an invitation to any retired superintendents and directors across the diocese, along with members of any religious orders that have had a hand in Catholic education over the last however many years. Um, at this celebration, we'll also be renewing and signing the partnership agreement at Mass, along with the Catholic District Board's across the uh, diocese and the diocese itself and St. Jerome's University. And the poster for that is attached. And happy to answer any questions about that. Thank you. Uh, we went last year, the numbers that went last year, and it was really, really nice. Where was it we went, Laurie? It was in Wellington County? What was we the were up in um, Walkerton. Walkerton. Yeah, it was really church, lovely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, really lovely evening. Any questions? No? Okay. Well, if you can, it, it really is a, a wonderful experience, and you meet people from all over the diocese, uh, different parishes. It's very, very nice. Thank you. Uh, keeping with uh, Superintendent now, we're going to 10.6, Adult Faith Formation. Thank you. So the report before you outlines how Faith Formation Program developed for staff supports our believing pillar in our strategic plan. Um, we have the benefit this year of the Bishop's Pastoral Letter on Catholic Education, Renewing the Promise, and this has provided us with an opportunity to take a look at the heart of our mission with students within today's context. And uh, you'll note in the letter, Renewing the Promise from the Bishops, they talk about how um, the mission has not changed, our central reason for being has not changed, but certainly our context over time has. And the promise that's being renewed is that our students will continue to encounter Christ every day in our Catholic schools. We know that adult faith formation in our system is essential if we're going to continue, to continue to contribute to the formation and the transformation of our students and to provide these daily opportunities for students to encounter Christ in our schools. So the report before you outlines the components of our program and the offerings that will take place over the course of the year. Uh, each of our uh, sessions include prayer, scriptures with reading, reflection and dialogue, content and instruction, and then reflections bringing forward the experience of the learner, because that's a big part of faith formation. The program includes offerings for all staff, the adult faith formation book, we call it the AFF program, but I've also put a copy of that in front of you so that you can see the variety of, of offerings that we have, and that's open to all of our staff, and we're really focusing this year on ensuring that staff, all staff, see themselves in the invitation for faith formation. Um, a lot of times we know that teachers see themselves in that and other staff think, oh, that's just for the teachers. So we're trying to uh, really come up with some different ways to be intentional about extending that invitation to all staff. We also have offerings for all of our leaders, uh, including our administrators, which is the Theological Education for Leaders, uh, commonly known as our TEL program. And that's, I think, the link for that program is included in the report along with retreat opportunities. Uh, senior staff also uh, take the opportunity to have uh, reflections. Um, we have offerings for our emerging leaders through our leadership program, and uh, of course other supports for faith formation that are outlined in the, in the report are focused on faith newsletter, theological theme monthly reflections, grace notes from our system chaplain. So those things are all available on staff net as well to, for all staff to, to access. And certainly we extend a, a big thank you to our partners across the diocese and in our parishes because a lot of them are contributing to uh, offering these sessions and, and running them. And uh, Jillian's done a great job of tapping a lot of our staff. We have some very gifted staff 
so you'll notice in the program this year there's a lot of our own staff that are leading some of the, the offerings. So I'm pleased to answer any questions that you may have. And Theology on Tap is in there, so please join us for that because it's a fun night and uh, we have two uh, over the course of the year, but they're always a fun night as well for all staff. So. Yes, they are good evening. Uh, Trustee Michael, question? Uh, through you, Madam Chair, to Trust Superintendent Nar. It's nice to have you back. Good to be um, back. I just wanted to know if this is only open to staff. So currently these programs are, the Eco Cafe tends to be, because uh, we do that in partnership with School Sisters of Notre Dame, so that's brought in some more of our community members and some of our parents. Um, but this is the program outlined for staff um, for the most part. Certainly if any of you wanted to attend that, um, let me know and we can get you registered for one. That go for other groups like SEAC or CPIC as well? Sure, and you know we're always working with those leads as well because if there's something that's more specific to what they would want, we're happy to go in and, and do something with that particular group because sometimes we find we want something that targets um, the group of people around the table, so we can certainly do that as well. Thank you, Lori. Okay. Any other questions? Trustee Carabella? Thank you. Welcome back to Lori. So um, are these very well attended? Would you say that it's packed? you know, waiting room only or sometimes even sold out? Yeah, sold out if you could call it sold out. We don't sell tickets for it, but um, they are, they tend to fill up pretty quickly and um, we actually had had to, because we had some staff that were going to every single one and then not opening the door for other staff to go. So we've had to sort of suggest to people that they, they avail themselves of, you know, two opportunities over the course of the year because we do tend to sell out. Um, if we can, sometimes we will open it up to more if we've got people on a waiting list. I know our board retreat always has a, a waiting list as well. Um, but we try and send out other information for opportunities that staff, that we're not necessarily running, but, other, but staff can go to. Um, so through our partnership, uh, St. Jerome's University offers once a month, uh, there's a Friday lecture series, and it's free. So we communicate that out to staff because they can go and you know, a group of them can go and, and join on their own or whatnot. So, yep, very well attended. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay, thank you very much, Superintendent Nah. Uh, moving on to 10.7 Ministry of Education update education funding for 2018 to 2019, Superintendent Nah. I'm sorry, Superintendent Nagoy. <laughs> that would have been a surprise for you, Laurie. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead, Roxana. Thank sorry. you, Madam Chair. On August 24th, the Ministry of Education released uh, Memorandum B14, uh, Update Education Funding for 2018-19, outlining a number of changes and reinvestments of the, both the Grants for Student Needs as well as the uh, Education Program other for this current year. The most significant change is the reallocation of the uh, Special Incidence portion to the special education per pupil amount, all of these changes being within the special education allocation, so moving it from one um, allocation to the other. Uh, the announced uh, EPO or education program other on the renewed math strategy has been uh, replaced with focusing on fundamental math, uh, which changes some of the focus of the schedule um, um, professional development day for our teachers. However, the funding remains the same. The compensation adjustments for the trustee honoraria and the executive compensation for uh, the current year has been suspended at the uh, levels that have been in 2017-18, um, with the increases introduced that year to remain in place. Finally, the uh, cash management strategy, which is what I had mentioned earlier during the action item on the borrowing bylaw, has been expanded to include proceeds of disposition uh, in determining the calculation of uh, uh, the amount of the funds to be deferred for a board. And uh, our uh, board has uh, a significant amount of proceeds of disposition, um, around 27 million, uh, and we are waiting to see how they will be used in this calculation and whether or not we can exclude portions of them that have been already uh, allocated to projects ongoing projects, although not yet spent, or um, set up in uh, term deposits. 
Um, so details on these changes as well as the parameters around the cash management strategy are yet to be released. When we have more information, we'll bring it forward to trustees. Overall, uh, the estimated um, impact on the funding for 2018-19 for our board is a reduction of $81,000. So it's a reduction, however, it's not something very significant. Uh, as of right now, we do need to keep in mind it's just an estimate. We do have to run these numbers through our system, um, which uh, will um, indicate better how this will impact the board and will be captured in the revised estimates that we'll be bringing forward in December. Uh, I'll be happy to take any questions trustees may have. Thank you. So that's a reduction of 81,000 on a board that's already the lowest funded in the province. So that, that's correct. Is that the same percentage as other boards, relatively speaking? I'd like to um, draw your attention to the last couple of pages of the report, um, which is Appendix A to the memorandum, it outlines board by board what they assume the effect to be. I'm trying to get to it myself on um, the actual package to tell you the, the page number 86. Um, so it does outline what some boards will uh, lose or gain. So if I'm looking at the board like uh, Rainbow, um, district school board, they stand to lose about $1.4 million, which is significant for a board that size. So we, we are in a position where I would say we're pretty much neutral, um, and I do suspect part of that is being the lowest uh, funded. It's already efficient enough in how we get funded and how we spend um, the money, so the, the impact is pretty much neutral. Any questions, trustees? None? Okay. Thank you very much, Superintendent Nagoy. Let me just get back to my agenda here. Oh, there it is. Uh, so, moving on, uh, no miscellaneous information. Correspondence, there is one letter under 12.1 for your perusal trustees. Uh, Rosie, do we have any open questions? None? Thank you. Uh, we will not go back to in camera. We have no absentees. Thank you. Uh, so, I will ask for... Uh, adjournment and closing prayer by Trustee Ian Tomasi. So can I have, I can't believe it, it's not yet 8.15. Uh, Trustee Quinn, you're moving to adjourn? Yes, Thank you. Uh, Trustee Trites is seconding it. All in favor? Thank you very much. And Trustee Ian Tomasi, you're going to pray for us? Thank you, Madam Chair. I ask you to join me in the sign of our faith in the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Heavenly Father, as we come to the end of our time together, we thank you for what has been accomplished here today. May the matters discussed serve as a catalyst to move us forward and cause us to advance and see growth in all areas of our lives. May we leave here recognizing you are the God of all wisdom and you are willing to lead us forward. A special prayer for all our students embarking on a new year and all our, our staff who support them. This we pray in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And we thank our guests who have joined us. Thank you for coming this evening. Uh, trustees, as I outlined in a recent email, uh, we need to talk for a few minutes afterwards. So if you can just stay. Uh, that's only the, the student trustees do not have to stay. I uh, hope you have a wonderful day tomorrow at school. Uh, just the, um, uh, the other trustees. Thank you.